Northampton's Department of Public Health says toxic algae has been found in two of the city's ponds. In a world where the water is no good and the line between truth and lie is blurred. It's not poisonous. Stop saying it is. People are dying. Fear is everywhere. And only one man can save them. Trent Buckets. Trent, we need you. This September, the contamination. I'm Adelaide. And I'm Taylor. And welcome, welcome to, to the, the transcript. transcript. This week, the transcript assesses the straight pride parade in Boston, investigates our new Chromebook policy, looks into student travel opportunities, Hamped Up sits down with the new den leaders to chat about school spirit and sportsmanship, and the other stuff brings you top five tips for freshmen. Last weekend, the 2019 Three County Fair took place on the Northampton Fairgrounds. This marks the 201st year of operation for the Three County Fair, and the Agricultural Society pledges to continue well into the future. On Friday, multiple key leaders of the ongoing Hong Kong protests were arrested outside of their homes, according to the pro-democracy group Democisto. The arrest took place ahead of a major protest march on Saturday that marks the fifth year of Beijing ruling out universal suffrage for the city. Last week, world leaders assembled in Biarritz, France, for the 45th annual G7 summit. Five points were agreed upon by the conclusion of the summit on the 26th, including a declaration of support for a permanent ceasefire in Libya, as well as a claim to stand by and recognize the 1984 Sino-British Agreement on Hong Kong. On Tuesday, Parliament voted in favor of a debate that would possibly delay Brexit until January of 2020, other than the current set date for October of 2019. The vote saw a stripping of power in Boris Johnson's government and marked a loss for Boris Johnson's first vote as Prime Minister. In Northampton, Gay Pride is one of our most celebrated events, earning us the nickname of Lesbianville USA. Gay Pride originated in the 60s as a gay rights protest and lets LGBTQ people everywhere celebrate their sexuality loudly and proudly. But what about other types of pride? On August 31st, 2019, myself, Deja, John, and Robert decided to experience straight pride in Boston. So what about straight people? Do they deserve to celebrate their sexuality? We went to Boston to find out. We asked both protesters and counter-protesters some questions to further understand straight pride and think about whether it should have an allocated time like gay pride does. But the real question is, how did we get here? It's a winter sport. <laughs> it's just a parade to celebrate being proud of who you are. It doesn't really matter. It, I mean, the, I think the name's kind of a misnomer. It doesn't really matter if you're straight or gay or Democrat, Republican, whatever. It's, it's just about being proud of who you are and celebrating that. It's not about supremacy or that we're better than others. It's just that we want to be accepted as, as much as any other group. And we all have a right to free speech. And that's in our Constitution, the First Amendment. The events like this and like Charlottesville are literally just to make people angry. Yeah. It's about trying to oppress human rights. I think any type of oppression is obviously harmful for all humanity. Um, and it, and it's Hi, I'm Frida, and this year at NHS, a new program has been implemented providing each student with a Chromebook. This reduces the need for computer labs and Chromebook carts, which were previously in high demand. 
This week we met with NHS students Asher Davis and Audrey Johnson to hear their thoughts on the new policy. I think it's going to be a positive impact on the school community um, just because students that wouldn't otherwise have access to like Chromebooks and Wi-Fi and that um, will now be able to and that it's a one-to-one -one, like students can have use in class if like the teachers want to choose to do that. I guess a concern would be just like the privacy of having a Chromebook from the school using your school email, that's probably like my main concern. While similar programs have been put in place in the middle schools, this is the first wide-scale initiative being implemented on the high school level. As a result, the distribution of the device has been one of mixed results. Um, I think it's great that the school is providing Chromebooks for everybody, but um, I think some kids have their own personal computers that they prefer to use. and. Getting a Chromebook is kind of just a pain in the butt. My concerns about the Chromebooks are that um, I think they'll get lost and broken a lot because they aren't really being monitored. For more information on the Chromebooks or to pick yours up, visit room 211 next to the library. Smith. I'm Ben Raposa. I'm Jasper Fletcher. Welcome, Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Every year, students congregate at football and basketball games to cheer on and support our Blue Devils, forming the Devil's Den. Led by the past Den leaders, the Devil's Den has allowed students to build morale and express their school spirit. While participation in the age-old tradition has been a core part of NHS school culture for decades, attendance and enthusiasm has faltered in recent years. We sat down with former athletic director Kara Sheridan to talk about the challenges and responsibilities that come along with running a student section. Monitoring the Devil's Den entails making sure kids are safe, um, holding um, them accountable to their behavior, but also encouraging team spirit and camaraderie and support for our teams and for each other. Um, it also means having adults around who can support that process and, and encouraging kids to to engage with each other and with the opponents in a positive way. I'd love to add that uh, the Devil's Den is a great way to get involved and to be connected to your peers and to really get out and cheer for your team um, and to show everyone that, um, that you care about our sports and, and our kids out there. So I encourage everybody to come to events and to, um, and to be positive role models and to support each other and, and have a great time. We also sat down with this year's Devil's Den leaders to gain insight on this year's Devil's Den. I guess definitely from the past, the Devil's Den, I feel like most of like the underclassmen don't really show up. And like, it, like especially last year, like half the games there wouldn't even be like people there. And then like it there just wasn't really a den. But I feel like this year if like everybody goes and like everybody like participates because like it's like school spirit. I feel like if everybody does, it'll be like a good den because there's a lot of kids that are like willing to go to the games and like actually watch and like pay attention. Yeah, we just want to emphasize is that the policy that was started last year where if you play a sport uh, for whichever season uh, the admission to the games is free, that will be continuing this year. Um, so what you have to do is find Mr. Morrison. His office is on the other side of the band room and he'll give you a sticker if you play a fall sport um, and then you won't have to pay money to get into the games. I think like in past years um, it's been the participation has not really been what the upperclassmen have been looking for. Um, I think last year got a little better with Owen and Devante. Um, and I'm hoping that this year we can really make big strides in terms of how many people show up to the games. Hi, I'm Mary. And I'm Allie. Summer vacation is a perfect opportunity to travel to places for fun or for an event. While most students enjoy road trips, relaxing on a beach, or getting a summer job, Others choose to step outside of their comfort zone attending international service and leadership trips. We decided to sit down with a few of those students here at NHS to learn more about their experiences abroad this summer. Um, first I went trekking in the Himalayas, which was really cool, and then I stayed in a homestay for two weeks where we built a maternity wing and also taught English, and I built a soccer field and goals and stuff like that, which was really cool. Um, my favorite part was definitely the homestay because I got to stay with a family who didn't even speak English and it was amazing and I had sisters and a grandma which was really fun. 
I think my experiences affected my view on the world because I'm now less worried about the little things and have a bigger perspective on life and how to handle it. I was working with Israeli and Arab youth um, through Ultimate Frisbee um, trying to create a positive, safe environment for these two groups to interact. Um, there's a lot of negative stigma in the area and we were able to help create an environment where they could come together through sport and uh, create relationships that they could not otherwise do. I think I learned that no matter how big the divide is between groups, people are able to bridge gaps and um, really work towards common solutions and making the world a better place. For other high schoolers traveling abroad, I would say to you that you know, find something you're passionate about, um, work really hard and to achieve that goal. We went for volunteer work. We tutored English and we did a community service project where we built a sidewalk for a school. My advice if you're traveling abroad is to be careful about what you eat because I think like 15 out of the 18 kids on the trip got amoebas and other parasites. <laughs> My favorite part about the trip was the Dominican boys. <laughs> we then sat down with Alex Vogel, Northeast Programs Coordinator of Global Glimpse to get more insight on international leadership in service trips available for high school age students. I work for Global Glimpse and I am just about to complete two years there. And what Global Glimpse does is we bring together diverse groups of young people and put them on service learning trips to Latin America together. I think it's important that students gain a global perspective at a young age. I also have traveled from a young age. I went to Spain with Miss Kilbasa when I was in high school here. Um, and I saw flamenco. One, one evening we went to dinner and I saw a flamenco performance and, and it made me cry. And I thought I was like kind of like a cool kid on the trip. I used to make people laugh and stuff and like crying without wanting to, watching that flamenco performance, like that changed me for sure. And so you can't have those experiences unless you get out into the world and, and see it. If you're interested in learning more about these travel opportunities, check out these websites and look out for Global Glimpse posters around the school. Thanks for watching. Hello, I'm Gabe. And I'm Shiloh. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the other, other stuff. stuff. Summer is over and school is back in session. For incoming freshmen, starting high school can be a bit overwhelming. Luckily, we've compiled a list of tips to help you start the year off right. Number one, get at least eight hours of sleep each night. Number two, don't take up the entire hallway. Number three, eat a balanced healthy lunch. Number four, respect John. Hello, how's it going? Hey, hey. how are we doing? Oh, I'm just trying to think. What are you doing? Oh. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? Good, good, thanks for asking. What are you up to? Oh, uh, nothing, I was just coming in here to use the bathroom. Oh, okay, nothing else? No. 
sucking. Yep. Have a good one. You too. And last but not least, number five. Make sure you check out the secret pool on the fourth floor. We're confident that if you follow these steps, you'll do just fine. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much for watching, and tune in next Friday. Mm -hmm.